Every day, trucks carrying over $1 billion in goods cross between the US and Canada through Detroit, Windsor. That's more trade than many small nations do in an entire year. Yet for decades, those trucks have been choking on traffic, snarling through neighborhoods and clogging an aging bridge built for a simpler era. As of October 2025, the Gordie Howe International Bridge is now nearly complete, but its opening has been delayed until early 2026. As the project nears the finish line, the question isn't just why build a new bridge, it's can this new connection fix decades of dysfunction and reshape North American trade? Number 1. The Problem – A Bridge Beyond Its Time for almost 100 years, the Ambassador Bridge has been the primary link between Detroit and Windsor. In 1929, it was a marvel. By the 21st century, it had become a bottleneck. It was never designed to handle 40,000 vehicles a day, nor the logistical heft of modern trade. On the Canadian side, trucks leaving the Ambassador are forced into local streets before reaching Highway 401 causing traffic in residential areas, pollution, noise, and safety hazards. On the US side, traffic funnels into Detroit's infrastructure, often creating congestion and delays. Meanwhile, the Ambassador is privately owned, and its owners have repeatedly fought against government plans for alternative crossings, delaying progress. The bridge's dominance in traffic and politics meant that any new project had to face not just engineering challenges, but legal and power battles too. Number 2. The Vision More Than Just Steel By the early 2000s, Canada and the US began studying how to build a modern crossing, one designed for the future, not the past. In 2004, formal agreements were signed to explore options. Over the years, negotiations, environmental reviews, lawsuits, and design iterations shaped the plan. In 2018, construction officially began under a public-private consortium called Bridging North America. Canada financed the entire project bridge, access roads, and border plazas, believing the long-term economic payoff would justify the cost. This crossing would not just carry cars, it would carry futures. Number 3 engineering a monument. This is where ambition meets precision. When completed, the Gordie Howe International Bridge will span 2.5 kilometers, about 1.5 miles, carrying six traffic lanes plus a toll-free pedestrian and bicycle path. It features the longest cable-stayed main span in North America at 853 meters. Its towers rise 220 meters above the water, taller than Detroit's tallest buildings. It uses 216 steel cables, each tensioned with exact precision, to carry the massive deck load and resist dynamic forces like wind and vibration. Construction techniques were cutting-edge self-climbing cranes that rose with the towers, modular segments built off-site, and alignment so precise that when the two halves met, the error margin was less than 10 mm, about the thickness of a pencil. Number 4. Progress and Reality Check as of October 2025, officials report the project is approximately 98% complete, with final testing underway. The bridge towers are fully finished, and the deck is about 85% complete. 93% of the stay cables, 200 out of 216, have been installed. On the Canadian port of entry, progress stands at 77%. Building shells are done, and interior and inspection work continues. On the US, side, it's 78%, with interior work underway and inspection areas lagging behind at about 58%. The Michigan Interchange Steel is complete, local road enhancements are about 85% done, and pedestrian bridges over I-75 are around 34% complete. So yes, we're close to the finish line, but that last 2-5% often carries the hardest technical and bureaucratic hurdles. Number 5. Challenges politics, and conflict. The owners of the Ambassador Bridge fought land seizures, permits, and competition in court for years. Most of those lawsuits eventually failed, clearing the way for construction. Originally projected at about 5.7 billion Canadian dollars, total costs have grown to roughly 6.4 billion, including contingencies. Beyond the steel and concrete, every system lighting, tolling, sensors, and border security must work together seamlessly. 
Because this is an international crossing, both countries' customs and border agencies must test and certify their sides before opening. Some facilities have to be handed over months in advance to allow proper checks. Number 6. People Behind the Steel This isn't just a structure, it's a human story. Over 2,500 workers have logged more than 13 million labor hours. Engineers, riggers, surveyors, electricians, machinists, teams came from across North America and beyond. In both Windsor and Detroit, People feel a mix of relief that progress is real and anxiety about future traffic, neighborhood change, and environmental impacts. Number 7. What it unlocks – Trade, Mobility, and Legacy When this bridge opens, it won't just be about crossing a river, it'll be about rewriting how two economies connect. The Detroit-Windsor Corridor already handles over $100 billion in trade each year. With smoother crossings, delays will drop, costs will shrink, and supply chains will flow more efficiently. Trucks will finally bypass local streets, emissions will fall, quality of life will rise. A toll-free pedestrian and bike path connects major trail systems. The Iron Bell Trail, Joe Louis Greenway, and the Trans-Canada Trail, forming one of the first international bike and pedestrian crossings in the world. Number 8 risks and what could go wrong. If border inspection facilities or customs agencies aren't ready, opening could be delayed by months. Technical system failures, tolling, cameras or sensors could also slow final approval. And then there's nature floods. Ice or severe weather could always test the bridge's resilience. But this project was built with redundancy, rigor and resolve. Every challenge faced has been met with engineering precision and human perseverance. Number 9. The Climax – Opening Day Picture this moment – Fall 2025. The first vehicle drives across. Cameras capture the illuminated towers. A cyclist pedals from Detroit into Ontario without ever starting an engine. It's more than a ribbon-cutting, it's an infrastructural milestone, decades in the making. For one instant, you feel the weight of every plan, lawsuit, delay, and hour of work, and then, just like that, it becomes effortless. Number 10 finale, Beyond the Span The Gordy Howe Bridge isn't an ending, it's a beginning. In the coming decades, custom systems may evolve with AI, automation, and biometrics. The pedestrian path could become a tourism magnet, linking eco-travel routes between Canada and the US. And perhaps the bridge's design and data will guide future cross-border projects worldwide. When people look back 20 years from now, they might see the Gordy Howe not only as a feat of steel, but as the moment when Detroit and Windsor and two nations decided that connection was not just a convenience, but a vision.